Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome back to my SDL3 programming series. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a little look at something that may enhance your texture quality. So let's go ahead and do a little brief review of some of the things we've talked about in the previous lessons, like animation, loading textures, and so on. And specifically what I'm going to talk about today is controlling how our art scales. That is the scaling modes of our textures. So this will be a quick lesson, but it might be important if you're going for a pixel art style look. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at what we've done so far. And I'm just going to go ahead and run this program just so you can see as a recap here. We've got this little guy running around, and then he's going to flip his directions using the texture flip commands we looked at in the previous videos to flip our sprite. And again, I can scale this up uh, as I like, and it'll stay in the right proportion. So these are the things that we've done so far. Again, at this point, we've got pretty much enough stuff that if you wanted to make a simple game, you could go ahead and do so. So let's go ahead and look at the code here that enabled this type of program. And I'll let this guy run around on the top here. Let's just put it in the corner in case there's anything we want to reference. But the basics of what we've done so far here. So let's go ahead and start from the bottom here. We've got our entry point into our main program and the SDL application. Now this is our main abstraction here where we can simply call a loop function here, which is going to run our main loop of input, update, and rendering as we can see in this window. Now again, we created this abstraction so that we had a nice way to do testing or otherwise just keep all of our state in one specific place, this SDL application. Okay, let's go ahead and look at our SDL application now, which we can see is here. And again, we set up our things like a window, a render. Eventually, we're going to not want to you know, create our sprites here. We might want some sort of resource management system here. But anyways, we've got our sprite here. And then we've got some flags to control how our application is running, for instance. Now, again, we've got the setup for our application, including setting up the scene data. We've looked at some of this stuff in the previous lessons. I'm just doing a quick review here. Uh, again, setup scene data, we might want to have some sort of file format. But again, for now, we are loading our sprite, this uh, walking uh, bitmap image here, or this sprite sheet, which is playing one frame at a time here. Let's go ahead and open that up here. So I'm just going to open up in our uh, assets folder. Let me move out of the way so you can see everything that I am doing here. And I have that walk image, uh, walk BMP. And again, we have behind the screen uh, our color key so that we get the transparency with our background. And again, we're just running through each of these individual frames here. OK, so a few different things to think about here as we review this uh, code sample. But there is our walk image. And I'll go ahead and pop back up here. What else is going on here? Uh, let's see here. Oops, looks like I opened up some other file accidentally. Um, we have our destructor, and then again, the main part of our game loop, this sort of tick function, or you could call it advanced frame, whatever you want here. We have input, update, and render. And I'll go ahead and scroll down here, input, handling our input here. I can let you review that in some of the previous lessons where we learned about button handling. Uh, update, again, is calling our sprite update function, which is looping through the individual animations. So our sprite hangs on to that and then render here, uh, which ultimately does our drawing. OK, so we can draw as many sprites as we want here. And again, the order is important when we're drawing things in 2D. OK, so that was a quick recap. Again, if you're just jumping in this lesson or if you've been following along, it's kind of nice to see what's going on. Uh, we have a little bit more going on in our main loop regarding controlling our uh, system to make sure that we're running at 60 frames per second. Now, I am cheating just a little bit with this SDL delay, but otherwise we are computing the correct uh, frames per second here. And uh, otherwise, uh, we, we can get rid of this eventually. Uh, maybe we'll do a little bit more with the game loop timing later on. But uh, I'm happy enough uh, with this uh, for now. We will probably want to add some sort of delta time in here. We talked about that, uh, making our movement based off of delta time. In fact, we can make our uh, how we advance the animation frames maybe based off delta time or some other time computation. But again, maybe we'll get into those things later. But we have all the pieces that we need here. OK, now to the point of the lesson here, four minutes in. Um, what I want to talk about is this here. Uh, well, two things. We looked at our image here. I'm just going to open up that same image here. And this is, you know, pixel art here. If I scroll in here, I can see uh, the pixels here. Well, actually, did you see that? That was interesting in this viewer here. When I scroll out, you can see the pixels. And when I stop, they become blurry again. So that's exactly what we're going to talk about the art here. In fact, this program's doing something kind of interesting where it seems to be scaling up the pixels here and then it blurs them together. See how that difference if I just keep going back and forth there. And that's what you might want control over, depending on your art style. Now, based off how this was created, this looks like a pixel art style. It gives you that sort of like Super Nintendo, Game Boy uh, art style, I guess, uh, as, as well as a modern style for many games today. Um, so we might want to preserve that. So let's see, you know, is that preserved here when I 
zoom in here. I mean, this looks a little bit sort of blurry to me, uh, the pixel. So let's see if we can change that here. Um, and what I'm going to go ahead and do here, we'll create a little, uh, um, well, first let's look at the functions here and then we'll go ahead and do a little before and after to see if we can tell the difference here. Okay, so the types of functions I'm gonna be looking at specifically have to do with how we're rendering our texture. So I'm gonna look at the API by category here and let's go ahead to down into 2D accelerated rendering. This has to deal with textures and specifically I'm looking for the scale mode here. Uh, so let me look through these SDL set texture scale mode and this is our function here. So we've got our particular texture that we want to update and then the scale mode that we're going to set here. OK, uh, there's a few different ones here that are saying, what do we do when we increase the size of our window? Because, well, when we increase the size of our window, we have more pixels. So should we interpolate those pixels or should we have a pixel art style? So again, there's three different modes that we can play around with today. So let's go ahead and play with those. Uh, and uh, let me go ahead and just set this up. So let's go ahead and look in our uh, let's go in our sprite class here, which is at the top, which I didn't review as much since we just did that in the previous video here. Uh, but again, we have every frame playing and then the animation, which is just a series of frames or a series of rectangles that we select from. Uh, and then ultimately in our sprites here, right, we associate that animation. Uh, but ultimately what we're looking at here is the uh, texture. Okay, and this is what we want to control before we render. So let's go ahead and scroll down a little bit here. And uh, let's see, I guess we were doing, uh, I didn't review all of this, uh, I suppose here, but the, uh, you know, we could render with potentially rotation here. I'm gonna leave that in for now here, uh, but let's go ahead and do our uh, texture mode here. So let's go ahead and set this. And again, it'll return a error based off of success or failure. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, indent this properly. There we go. Uh, I'm not gonna do anything with the return value, but we are gonna work with our texture. And then I need to pass in some uh, scale modes here. Okay, so let's go ahead and play around with these. Uh, I'm just gonna capture these for now as an image just so we can do a before and after. Uh, but I think that'll do the, the trick here. And again, the default is the uh, scale mode linear. So that means as I double the size of my window, let's say, and those pixels stretch to be twice or four times as big, depending on the dimensions you're scaling in, uh, the pixels will accordingly look at neighboring pixels and uh, scale uh, accordingly there. Uh, let's actually see if we click on the help here. Uh, if there are, I mean, it, I guess we could dive a little bit more into these algorithms, but it says nearest pixel sampling, linear filtering, and then uh, nearest pixel sampling with improved scaling for pixel art. Okay, so we should try all of these here. Uh, by default, again, we have scale mode linear. Uh, so let's go ahead and just capture a, let's just capture a screenshot of that uh, running here. And what we're going to go ahead and do here, oops, let me comment that out and rerun, is uh, let's make our window full screen. Uh, I can't remember if I set a, uh, what did I do, F11? Oh, I guess, there we go. So I'll just press F11 for full screen mode. And let's just capture a little screenshot of this guy here so that we can kind of compare uh, F11 to toggle that down. And I'm just going to paste this in here. And let's just move that off to the corner. So that is going to be linear. Uh, and let's arrange these. I'll put these in the middle based off of the enum. Uh, let's now try nearest. Okay, let's see if we can see a difference. Just gonna paste this in here. And uh, oops, M texture is spelled wrong. M texture, there we go. Let's do a rerun here. F11. And let's see, I think we capture our guy looking in the other direction. So let's go ahead and do a print screen here. And we'll capture the same size window. Let's paste it in. Let's move it over here. I mean, already you can see quite a difference here. Uh, and let's go ahead and try pixel art. So nearest pixel sampling with improved scaling for pixel art. Okay, so I'm excited to see this. Uh, let's go ahead and see how this looks in our application. Let's delete that, paste it in, give it another go. Oops, let's see here. Uh, let's see, it says, do you mean uh, it was not declared in the scope. Hmm, let's take a look at this here. It's defined in STL surface. I wonder, this could just be a newer version. Um, yeah, it is here. Maybe I don't have uh, the correct STL version uh, for this. Uh, available since 3.2. Let's just see if I have this available. Uh, I'm gonna navigate into uh, this location where I built STL. So if you watch all those videos here, I guess it's defined in STL uh, surface. Let's see here. Uh, that is in 
uh, SDL underscore lowercase surface. And let's see, SD scale, let's see what it is, scale mode. So SDL as the API, uh, ah, yeah, I guess I don't uh, have it here. That's kind of interesting here. So uh, depending on when you installed this, looks like this is a version. Yeah, this enum is available since 3.13, which is where most of my build videos are. Uh, this is available since 3.20. Uh, might have to do a little quick update uh, from source here. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and just do that here. Uh, let's go ahead in my SDL3 directory uh, into SDL main. Now I wonder, did I? Uh, this is not a Git repository, so I'll have to rebuild this uh, very, very quickly here by just uh, downloading the source here again. Uh, let's just go ahead and do it. This will take about one minute here. So I'll re-download it. Let's go ahead and paste over this guy. Uh, let's blow away our installation, re-extract it out here. Uh, let's open this in a terminal and see how fast you can uh, do this to see if we can get our new feature here. Uh, let's make a build directory here. Rerun see make here and I'll go ahead and pause. And that worked. I'll go ahead and do a make here because we want to get the latest and greatest features. And I'll pause again. And we've got our library and let's make sure to do a make install with my super secret password. So we should have our SDL libraries uh, updated here. Now let's go ahead and give this a try here. And now we have this new mode. Okay, so just like that here. Um, I'll talk about this in a moment here, but let's go ahead and do a print screen. Oh, nice, I had it landed on the right position there. All right, let's go ahead and cancel that out here. And let's go ahead and paste this in here. I mean, this. This is it for the video here. Um, so what do we see here? I mean, if we do sort of a pixel by pixel match here, um, clearly this guy in the center is quite blurry. I don't know if I like that. We have this setting here. We might need to do a little bit more analysis. I mean, this is looking pretty close to me. Um, what's interesting is, uh, let's actually move this one closer. Um, and I can see uh, a little bit here, like if you look around this side here, some of the interpolation, there's just a different algorithm here. Okay, so maybe this is a better one to use and you can see some of that detail here. So there is a difference here and here towards the top left of the character, uh, if you look here. Uh, and maybe around like edges and borders and stuff, you might get some different definition, but it looks like it's doing a little bit better job of a blending here. But I would argue overall here, uh, you know, the value of this video, one, uh, the thing I want to talk about is SDL does update, okay? But one of the great things about SDL is that it, the updates are usually additive almost always. I mean, the ABI is stable, right? These te these function names aren't going to change, for instance, SDL set texture scale mode. But sometimes you do get new enums and you can upgrade and you get these cool features. And if someone comes up with a better algorithm, you can actually use it. So that's one reason why I really, really like the uh, SDL API. Again, the other cool thing here, as we saw here, is, um, you know, we get these new features to try out here and they can make quite an impact in your game. So anyways, this was just a little feature that I wanted to show you. Um, and I think for those of you building pixel art stuff, this is something that will be a nice feature uh, to know about. So anyways, folks, with that said, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, we refreshed building SDL stuff. Um, so if you haven't done that for a while, you might want to upgrade to 3.2 to get some of these new uh, features here. And um, otherwise, if you missed any of the other content, feel free to join the community at courses.mshot.io or follow along uh, my SDL3 lessons here, uh, where we'll keep uh, adding more content. So anyways, thanks as always for your time and attention, folks, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.